Hello, my name is Vitotas Butrimas. We're going to uh, start the uh, part three, the final part of a three-part series called Industrial Cybersecurity for the Chief Information Security Officer uh, to help him or her uh, speak the language of the engineers uh, that he has to work with in an industrial environment. Are we aware of OTICS security challenges? And if so, will we act? Remember the story of the captain of the HMS Titanic on the fateful evening in April 1912? It is recorded that the Titanic received warnings from other ships in the area that they sighted many dangerous icebergs and decided to stop sailing and drift for the night until daylight allowed them to steam a safe course. For some reason, the captain of the Titanic chose to ignore these warnings and gave orders to keep on the same course and top speed throughout the night. For some reason, actionable information was given to a leader and the leader chose to ignore it and instead of avoiding a risk, decided to keep on going ahead. I call this kind of thinking cyborg thinking. There is even a website devoted to this term that you can visit. I like the fourth definition, a cyber-related condition whereby a threat or warning of a possible threat results in either the misinterpretation or misunderstanding of a given situation, resulting in a, in a decision in which no corrective action is taken. So, you know, cyber, cybersecurity, and the uh, icebergs of the mind that keep us from acting on what we should do something about. IT. OT and ICS's role in operations of critical infrastructure. Once again, we return to where IT, OT, and ICS are found in an industrial or manufacturing environment. There are exceptions, perhaps many, that do not fully apply to what I have depicted in this chart. It is intended to reinforce the idea that IT cybersecurity policies for the business and operational sides need to be viewed and implemented in a coordinated and comprehensive way. Nothing should be left to chance, and defensive measures are placed where they should be. Remember the 300 Spartans at Thermopylae. Their leader led his force ably and effectively, but did not take into account for the possibility of a back mountain trail that would easily offer an opportunity for a surprise attack from behind. Again, here we see depicted a rough picture of where IT and associated hardware and software are found in industrial enterprises. Some may think that protecting IT and OT is sufficient to protect the ICS side where the physical process is, but protecting the control room when the SCADA is, as I have heard some high government officials say, is, to, is not enough. Put an industrial length firewall between the OT and the internet facing IT side of the enterprise and that should be sufficient, right? Wrong. Take a look at the next slide. Remember that the physical process where the ICS is, is also a target. Yes, we do have cyber attacks on the IT side of industrial enterprises. The cyber attack that wiped the data off 30,000 office PCs and servers found in the administrative part of Saudi Aramco in 2012 hit the office IT side very hard, but did not reach to the equipment and software used to manage the operations in the actual oil fields and petrochemical facilities. However, we see a disturbing trend in cyber attacks over the years on the hardware and software used to monitor and control a physical process at those same industrial plants. The cyber attacks on parts of Ukraine's power grid in 2015 and 2016 affected the breakers at substations which resulted in up to a quarter of a million customers losing electricity. The Triton or Trisis cyber attack in 2017 focused on compromising the safety systems of a petrochemical plant in Saudi Arabia. The ransomware, or as I would call it, disruptionware, planted on the IT side of the Columbia pipeline in May of 2021, caused the operator of the unaffected operational side to shut down a 8,000 kilometer long pipeline for safety reasons. So you see, we need to protect not only the IT, OT, but also the ICS where the most sensitive operations are taking place governed by the laws of physics and chemistry. Cross-trained professionals are needed to fill a serious gap. 
we find an issue having to do with protecting the control system or ICS side. In this diagram, we see that the number of computer science trained professionals and their approach to protecting the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information and data is dominating the approach to cybersecurity. The engineers on the far right may not know about IT-based cybersecurity practice, but are very concerned with the safety, availability, integrity, and performance of their operations. They also may not be aware that applying an IT-based security policy on one of their field devices, such as a sensor, may cause it to malfunction. The IT security policymaker may not realize that performing a virus scan on the control network may cause the system to fail since the field devices do not have the computing power found on the desktop of the CISO. What is needed is an understanding of the peculiar security requirements of both the office IT and the industrial side of the enterprise. I hope that after viewing this MLM, you as a CISO and together with your engineer colleagues will help make the smaller red circle expand where we have IT, OT, and IC security specialists, or at least a team coming from both environments that will have a shared body of knowledge about industrial cybersecurity and how to protect both the IT administrative side and the industrial side that, where the physical process are. Next takeaway, let's avoid IT and ICS misunderstanding and policymaking. Seek out and listen to what the engineers are telling you and avoid having this kind of, of conversation as depicted in this slide. This is about a document that was sent uh, to a utility from a government uh, agency uh, for proposed cybersecurity requirements, and this is the response they had. Your cybersecurity requirements state that they are intended to address critical information infrastructure, including industrial control systems. However, your draft requirements do not address industrial control systems. That shows the gap that's existing between the uh, policymaker in the government who may have an IT cybersecurity bias because he's used to working with it in his office, and he maybe has never visited a power plant or a control room at a pumping station. This is what needs to be considered. Next and the last, place yourself near your engineers and work as a team. The team should contain experienced professionals who can converse in the language of engineering, industrial automation, OT, ICS, and industrial IoT. The CISO must see himself or herself as a hands-on coach of a winning team. And we mentioned in part two of this series the importance of definitions. As one engineer has said, do more than visit. Create IACS, OT, ICS, IIoT, and, and Industrial Internet of Things, security executive and technical level councils and working groups with the field folks and regularly go out into the field during field acceptance testing. Key takeaways from this three-part MLM. For further information, there are uh, references available to continue your study in this very important and uh, dynamic area. Mm -hmm.